Hi, how you doing? Tonight's homework is page 211. We will be estimating fraction sums and differences. So before we estimated a benchmark or used a benchmark to estimate decimals. So now we're going to use a benchmark to estimate fractions. So if you look at this benchmark right here, uh, it starts off at zero. 0 over 2, 1 whole would be 2 over 2, so in the middle of that, the fraction would be 1 half. So that's 0, half, and then 1 whole. Okay, so we'll use that to estimate our fractions. We'll go ahead and take a look at number 1. Go ahead and take a look at number 1. Okay, so we have to do 3 eighths plus 4 fifths. So if we use our number line, we have 0 over 8, that's 0, and then 8 over 8 is equal to 1 whole, so half of 8 is 4, so that's 4 over 8. So we have to figure out where does 3 eighths go on our number line. So if this is 4 over 8, 3 eighths should be very close to that. So that tells us that 3 eighths is very close to 1, one half, so that would be 1 half. All right. Now for 4 fifths, since we have 5 as a denominator, we have 0 fifths. And then we have 5 fifths. But since 5 is not an even number, then it won't have an exact half. So we'll just use all the fifths. So we have 0 fifths, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths. And as you can see, 4 fifths is very close to 5 fifths, which is equal to 1 whole. So if we do 1 half plus 1 whole, we get 1 and 1 half. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a subtraction problem. It works the exact same way. So we have 9 tenths minus 3 eighths. So we have 9 tenths. So since I know uh, half a 10 is 5, I'll do 0 tenths to represent 0. 10 tenths represents 1 whole. 5 tenths represents 1 half. Our fraction is 9 tenths. So therefore, uh, 9 tenths is very close to 10 tenths, so that's equal to 1 whole. We already did 3 eighths in the first problem. And we figured out that 3 eighths was close to 4 eighths, which is 1 half. So for this problem right here, we have $1 minus 50 cents, so the answer would be 50 cents. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 6. For number six, we have seven twelfths plus one seven. So 12 is an even number, so we can do zero twelfths to represent zero, 12 twelfths to represent one whole, six twelfths represents one half. Seven twelfths is a little bit more than six twelfths, so it's, a, it's very close to being one half. So we'll use one half for seven twelfths. Now, seven is an odd number. So when I do my seven denominator, I start off with zero sevenths, and I'll do seven sevenths. It won't have an exact half, but as you can see, about three sevenths is half, all right? So we'll just go ahead and do all of our sevenths, one seven, two seven, three seven, four seven, five seven, six seven. So when I look at one seven, it looks like it's closest to zero. So that would be one half plus zero. 50 cent plus zero is equal to 50 cent. Go ahead and take a look at the, one of the problem solvings down at the bottom. We'll have to refocus this a little bit. All right, so let it refocus. So the question reads, does Jenna need more than, oh, Mr. Henderson left off some math words, so let's go back and fix that. Does Jenna need more than or less than one cup of raisins to make muffins and oatmeal? Okay, so Jenna uses seven eighths cups of raisins for muffins and five eighths cups of raisins for a bowl of, of oatmeal. So if she's gonna make muffins and oatmeal, and it's telling me I need to combine those two, I have to figure out if it's more than one whole. So 
Seven eighths is an even, eight is an even number, so I can do zero eighths to represent zero, eight eighths to represent a whole, so four eighths represent a half. So as you can see right here, seven eighths is very close to being eight eighths, so that's one whole. Five eighths is very close to being four eighths, so that's one half. So if I combine those together, that's one and one half. So she will need more than one cup. Please complete the rest of the problems. Thank you.